Jesus. I'm just going to start out with a prayer today. This is Esther again. Testimony time. Hallelujah. Just something God gave me. Bringing back the testimony. Testimony time. Like the good old days when you would talk about the goodness of Jesus. What he's done for you. Remember the mothers, they used to stand up in the church and they used to say, oh, hallelujah, I thank God for Jesus. I thank him for saving me. I thank him for him for baptizing me. And I thank him for filling me with the Holy Ghost shed on the in the mighty name of Jesus. They used to talk about the goodness of the Lord, how he brought them over. How I made it over. Oh, glory. I can remember hearing my mom say sometimes she wouldn't have words. She would be feeling so overwhelmed. And sometimes right now we say, I feel some kind of, uh, what is it, some type of a way. But she would say, hmm. Just moan. But she would always say, I'm trusting in the Lord. As a matter of fact, they used to sing an old song and it and it would go something like this. I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord until my I will trust 
in in the Lord. In, in the Lord Until I die Until I die She was saying no matter what I'm going to trust in the Lord I pray today that you are trusting in the Lord. I pray today that no matter what is happening, I know the sun is shining. It is so beautiful here in Rochester. It's cold, but it's beautiful. And the sun is shining. But we still must trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord. I know there's a lot going on with the the viruses that are out there, the flu. Uh, there's tons of things that are going on right now, and it's a little nerve-wracking. And uh, sometimes you can feel a little insecure, unsecure, and you're just not sure. And you're weaving, and you're saying, Lord, I'm trusting, I'm praying. But What? But I say to you today, trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. He will work it out for you. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good, for those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. But this is testimony time with Esther Pinkston here in, in, in social media. media saying hello to everybody, and I see some friends stopping in, just saying hi. Uh, I want to, uh, our foundation scripture is out of Revelations, and it's Revelations chapter 12, verse 11, and I'm going to quote it. It simply says that they overcame him. They overcame him. Him who? They overcame the enemy. They overcame the, if you could say the world, the flesh, and the devil. They overcame whatever obstacle. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word are the words of their testimony, even until death. They were willing to, to declare, they were willing to talk about, they were willing to be a witness, they were willing to open their mouths and not be ashamed to tell the world what God has done for them. And I have an unction from the Holy Spirit to encourage folks right now, let's bring back testimony time not talking about you know getting into somebody's business the devil will use it ah uh, people want to know your business nobody wants to know your business but if you want to be victorious if you want to overcome the word says and these are, this is the scripture they overcame him with the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony so God has brought me a long ways. God has done a lot for me. I've already given one testimony. You can go to it there. Just go to youtube.com and put in search Esther Pinkston and I'll pop up. And, and, and what happens is this. I've already told you about uh, my mom. I'm going to talk more about that. But today I want to talk about secure and feeling secure. Because I haven't always felt secure. Come coming from, as I shared with you before, a kind of negative background. Yeah, I had foundations. I had my grandfather was a very strong man in the community and in the Lord. And my mom was a very strong person in the community I grew up in, was very small and connected. 
in the village raised the kids and everybody seemed to know about each other and they care about each other and that was good. But as an individual coming up into that kind of negative background, I never always felt secure. You can, you can be with others and you can be around others. And as a matter of fact, my, my bishop mentioned that today in, in, in our uh, service. I have dealt with that void within me, not now, thank God, but for years I grew up kind of with that void. There was always something there that just wasn't filled. No matter how many people I were around, no matter what I was doing, no matter how much partying, no matter how much, and we would party, hello, Florida gang, and do those things. But it wasn't, that void wasn't filled. I needed something else. And what I needed was Jesus, but I didn't really, I wanted to fight that, see, because I grew up in the church. I come from a line of ministers, and I knew the word. I had learned the word, but I hadn't had a personal relationship with the Lord. So therefore, I was looking for love in all the wrong places. You want it, you're going to find it in your peers. You want to find it in your friends. You want to find it, uh, you go from man to man if you're female, or you go from woman to woman if you're male. You're just going, you're searching, you're looking for that peace of mind, for that love, for that security. If I could just be secure on a foundation, unshakable, that's where I want to be. You, you know, I want to tell you something. Children today want to feel secure. They may act like they don't want it. I worked with children for 20 years out at the city of Rochester, City Parks and Recreation as a subcontractor. They would rebel against rules and regulations and they wouldn't want to do it. But you know, deep within, they wanted to know. They wanted to know because it made them feel like we cared. When I, it made them feel like I cared for them, that I would take the time and to give them some instructions or I would take the time, call them to the side and say, you know, maybe you don't want to do that or you 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 know something that is that doesn't look like you. Uh, let's try it this way or let's try it that way. I can help you. Let's work on it together. They really, really want to know that they are secure. You know, one of the things that we had as well, and, and I don't know why the Lord's leading me this way, but we had the after school kids. And what they would have to do is uh, come and remain at the schools or at the rec centers or wherever until their parents get off from work and come pick them up. And uh, so it was, a, it was a way of them feeling secure. One of the concerns that many children have, and I even had it when I was a kid sometimes, when you leave home, will your parents be there when you get back? You just want to know that it's secure, that home is there, mom is there, and you would love to know if dad is there. But you know how we are. Dads, we don't mean anything, but we love mom. <laughs> Bless God. Um, you just want to know. And I was blessed of that foundation of security. Every time I went to school, when I look back, my mom was there waving me off on the bus. And then when I would get home, she's there standing in the roadway waiting for us as we got off the bus. That was the most secure feeling you can ever have. I can't remember a time that she was not there from my leaving for school and for my coming home. That security, that foundation, the foundation for security, I'm reading here from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It's out of the New Literal Translation. It says, for God made Christ, who never knew sin, to be offering, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Now, a sense of security is something everyone needs and desire. I think it is Pavlo, it's one of the basic needs of 
human beings in surviving. Everyone it, 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 it's, it's something everyone needs and desires. I'm reading a note here from someone. It says, security enables us to enjoy healthy thinking and living. It means we feel safe, accepted, approved of. Oh, boy, those are some powerful words. We feel safe. We want to feel safe in our nation. We want to feel safe in our home. I just said children want to feel children want to feel safe with their parents. Wives want to feel safe with their husbands. I was married for many years. My late husband is in heaven. But I enjoyed the fact that I felt safe with him. Wasn't always like that from day one. Now we had our struggles. Most of them were mine. Because I had brought some luggage in from my past. And where I had kind of schemed and connived and done things that weren't maybe the best to others. Now I was feeling that this was going to happen to me. So I had a fear there that uh, maybe I, I, I can't be too secure right here right now. But as time went on and as God cleared that stuff out of my heart and I began to realize that I could feel safe and I could feel secure. I could feel safe that he was coming home at night. I could feel safe that he would be there in the morning. I could feel safe. That's a good feeling. Well, we can have that feeling in Jesus. One of the names that the Lord has is Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. He, he says in his word, he would never leave us nor forsake us. He gave us his Holy Spirit to live within us, not only beside us, but he dwells in us. We're his temple. We're his house. It said accepted. It says it means we feel safe, accepted. How many people want to feel accepted? No one, no one wants to feel rejected. Rejection causes people to hurt others, causes people to hurt themselves. Uh, it, it's an awful thing when you feel rejected, when you feel no one cares, no one loves you, and no one seems to share that with you. Uh, you have a tendency to get withdrawn. You can you come, become depressed. You know, I tried... Um, as I was dealing with the situation, and that's another testimony, but I just want to share a point here. I tried to go into darkness, go in, shut off all the lights, close down all the curtains, the drapes, get on the couch or in the bed, pull the cover over your head, and just stay there. And maybe you're kind of thinking, I, hopefully it'll all go away. Well, it doesn't. And if you allow the enemy or the world, the flesh, the devil, yourself, to get yourself enclosed into that, you won't do well. You'll end up going to a place that you don't want to be unless God sends a word, God sends an angel, his Holy Spirit, some way to draw you out of that. And many have received that right at the nick of time. Remember, I told you sometime, the knock comes at the door at the right time or the phone rings at the right time. God can reach you. None of us are too far to be reached today. No man is too far down. As long as there's breath, there's hope. Amen? So let's move on. He says, so she actually, it means we feel safe, accepted, and approved of. Approved of. I don't care what you're doing when you do your best. Your best now might not be my best, but it's your best. But you've done your best. Gosh, it feels so good to be approved of. You know, 
Jesus approves of us. He he has there's a there's a word in the Greek called dakimas. Dakimas. And what it is, it's a stamp. And I understand in the uh Hebrew days, Roman days, something would be approved by the king and he would stamp it, boom, dakimas, it's approved. But when we go through trials and tribulations with the Lord and, and we come out with a testimony and we come out giving him glory, we come out saying, thank you, Jesus, no matter what you brought me out. Might not have been the way I wanted to come out. Might not have been the way I thought I should come out. But you knew what was best for me. And you brought me out. And I give you glory. And Jesus is stamping saying, Dakimas, I approve. I approve. Glory be to God. I approve of you. Because you went through that test. You went through that trial. It looked like to you many a times you weren't going to make it. But you came through. And, I, and, and you came through with a praise on your lips. You came through giving God the glory. Testimony time. So let's continue. So it's saying here. Now we're talking about feeling secure. That foundation for security. Secure. So it says it means we feel safe. We feel accepted. We feel approved of. It says, when we are secure, we approve of ourselves, we have confidence, and we accept and love ourselves in a balanced way. That's big. When we are secure, we approve of ourselves. Do you know I once had this problem years ago. I told you before, I was very shy, little wallflower in school. Took me a while to get out of there. But I didn't approve of myself because I felt that word rejected. Other people didn't approve of me. Now, I don't know. You know, we draw what we expect. So, that negativism that I had grew up with was surrounding me. So that aura was there and it was drawing in that thing. So now I'm thinking, okay, well, nobody approves of it. And so therefore I, I'm not too good. And I would say uh, words to myself, you know, not good words. Don't do that. Talk to yourself, but say good words to yourself. Declare and decree, I am who God says that I am. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am God's best. How do I know? It's said in God's word. God, everything that he made was good. I am God's best. Amen. I'm made in his image. I know that I can. If I don't get it this time, I'll get it next time. But I will. I'll get it. Amen. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So it says when we are secure, we are proof of ourselves. We have confidence. Confidence. When you have confidence, you can instill confidence. I remember my last trip home a couple of years ago. I drove down to Florida. And um, I have a tendency not to tell a lot of people about some things that I'm going to undertake for a while. Because people have a way of destroying or trying to steal your confidence. They will spend time saying, oh my God, you're not going to do that. Or I wouldn't do that. They want to instill fear. And fear is the opposite of faith. God operates in faith, not fear. Amen. So I'm saying like, okay, I can do this. So I, I, I took some time and mapped out, you know, and I do, I use all the, I like gadgets. I'm technical. So, yes, you have Google and the phone and Google Maps, but I got, um, uh, what is it, online, the thing there that I talk to. All these guys, I, I, I have these programs to help me to navigate to get to where I'm going. So, excuse me, so here I am, planning my trip, got myself all together, early in the morning, and I get on that road, and all I see is road, mountains, trees, I'm telling you, and enjoying Jesus. 
It was a sabbatical. It was a time of revelation. And I'm riding in the security of the Lord. I didn't take any chances. I made sure that when I stopped, I stopped in very public places to refuel, stretch my legs, service myself, get back on the road. I'm telling you, my 17-hour trip, when I stopped in the hotel in Georgia where I was born, I was feeling elated. God had done it, given him grace. So then I stay there, and, and I'm going somewhere with this, so just stick with me. And so then I leave there, and we go on down to Florida because I was headed to a family member who was becoming 100 years old down in, down in uh, closer to, to uh, Miami. So now we're going that way, and I, I, I drive over, stay there, whole weekend, leave there, come back uh, over to Orlando Way, stop into my hometown, spend a um, couple of nights so with my friend and go back and spend the last night in Georgia. And now I'm ready to come back home. I'm still feeling secure. I'm wrapped up in Jesus. I'm praying in the spirit. Oh, got my music going and I'm blessing the Lord. And one mind says, I was supposed to leave, so I left a day early. My family didn't like that, but I felt in the spirit to do it. So that's what I did. So I left a, a one day early. So I got started on the road. And I'm on the interstate now. I'm just coming home and enjoying the Lord. Now it is piping hot. It is like 90, 100 degrees weather. My air conditioner is blowing itself full blast. So all of a sudden I'm outside of Atlanta. And I start seeing this little misty white smoke coming out of my vent. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, what in the world is going on? Uh, I've never seen that before. So then I said, I better pull it o pull over and, and check it. So I pull over and uh, there's an auto place there in a gas station. You know the story when you're traveling. And so I get out and I raise my hood and I'm looking and I said, I don't see anything. And so then um, there's a brother over there. He's, he's, when I say brother, I got it, same complexion as me. And he's over we're doing some work on this car. So I say to him, I don't know, but sir, uh, there seemed to be some white misty smoke coming out of my car. I can't see what, I don't know what it is. He says, oh, I've had that happen to me one time. He says, he says that you're going to have to probably uh, have them take out this whole um, dash and go underneath there and fix it. And I thought, oh, Lord. So I said, well, okay, thank you. <laughs> so thank God that my husband was a mechanic. He had taught me a lot. At that time, my brain just wasn't kicking in. So I went over to a uh, AutoZone store or something that was there at the mall. And they, they were open, thank God. And so I'm standing there and I'm calling my AAA and I'm calling my own star and I'm calling my this. And I happen to have family all up and down the coast. So then I'm outside Atlanta. I call my cousin who's an attorney. He's retired. He was at home. And I still just want to let you know, this is where I am. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm doing fine. But I saw this stuff come out. I want to have it checked before I get back on the road. So he says, okay, keep me posted. So now I'm waiting on the numbers to come in. Long story short, the numbers come in. And uh, there was this truck, a white pickup truck, new truck. There was a Caucasian gentleman in this truck. Please listen to what I'm saying. I'm talking about feeling secure, safe, encumbered in God. I'm talking about the God that I serve. This is testimony time. So the guy comes out of the AutoZone store. He gets in his truck and he kind of sits there a little bit. And then he and I start to think, oh, Lord, now I, I was raised in the South. I know about the South. Now, Father, I just bind in the name of Jesus anything that is not right. You know how we do. So, but I'm praying for God for help, but I'm binding also, right? So this gentleman drives away. And I'm still there waiting on AAA and these guys to do whatever we're going to come up with the decision to do. Well, lo and behold, this white truck comes back. And he pulls over a little bit and he kind of sat there and then he finally gets out. So he got out of the truck 
tall farm looking guy. Like he's a farmer. And had one of the jeans and the whole works. And he kind of slowly approaches me. And he says, Miss, are you having trouble? And I said, yeah, I said, I am actually. I, I think, I said, I'm not sure. I said, I just saw this white mist come out of my vent. And I just wasn't comfortable in going any farther. So he said, um, do you mind if I take a look? And I said, no, by all means. So he took a look and he looks out of there and there's, I tell you, I felt so, I just felt so terrible. But God orchestrates everything. He looks underneath there and he sees this water that drips out of the air conditioning hose, right? He said, no, that's supposed to come out. I said, well, but there was this mist coming through my vent as I was driving. He said, miss, this is 100 degree weather and it is hot here. He said, this means that your air conditioner is working well, it's kicking out good. He said, mine does it all the time. He said, there's nothing wrong here. He said, I saw you earlier. And he said, I didn't know how to approach you. He said, so I went away and the Lord had me come back. He said, you are doing just fine. He said, can we have a word of prayer? And the two of us stood and we prayed. I've never seen him before. He'd never seen me before, but the Lord just used him as an angel to bless. He got in my vehicle, drove my 17 hours back to my home state in Rochester, and all is well. Feeling secure in the Lord. God protects us no matter where we are. No, you don't take chances. I wasn't taking any chances. I, my car was serviced, good shape. And I'm driving home. But I felt insecure. Now, was that a way for the Lord to have me meet this guy? I don't know. I have no idea. All I know is angels can come all uh, colors and shapes. Amen? In sizes. God is no respecter of persons. Amen? Just because I'm black don't mean I have to have a black angel. Amen? As a matter of fact, there's no color in heaven. Amen? Bless God. There is one color. I changed that. It's probably red. The blood of Jesus. Amen. So let's get done now. So here we go. So we have confidence and we accept and love ourselves in a balanced way. You know, the, 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 the commandment says, what well, first one, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And then the second one is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. So if you don't love yourself, you can't very well love your neighbor. Amen? Neighbor is anyone other than you, by the way. So you can't very well love anybody else. I believe it is God's will for each of us to be secure. This is what the writer is saying. The foundations for security are knowing we are in Christ. Accepting God's unconditional love and accepting ourselves even as though we were realized even as though we realize we have weaknesses and are not perfect god never called us to be perfect we grow into perfection in him he knows that we have weaknesses he knows that we're going to mess up he says he knows what's in man because he made man but yet he's our redeemer he is not to leave us that way. His desire is to restore us and give us the joy of his salvation. I'm just excited today. I love the Lord. Remember when God looks at you, he sees righteousness of his son Jesus. Please remember this. You know, the enemy has a way of, hey, you can slip and say the wrong word. I used to have a foul mouth in the world. God took that away right away. Yes, yes, yes. Me used to have a very, very foul mouth. I tried to be foul. I used to work at one to be foul because I wasn't raised being foul. My stepfather had a foul mouth. My brothers had a foul mouth. My mom never did. So I, I wanted to be like them and I wanted to be popular. And I wanted to say the words, you know. But no matter how hard I would say those words, my friends would say, you know, you don't sound right saying those words. They, they don't fit you, but I would try to say them and make them, you know, show them that I'm, I'm, here, I'm there. I'm with you. 
you know, um, God doesn't see us, but it, 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 it hold us at our thoughts. See, my foul mouth left right away. But there were some other faults that I had. They were stubborn. They didn't want to leave right away. My uh, loving to drink alcohol, love to drink alcohol. We were a partying group of people. Love to drink alcohol. It didn't want to leave right away. I can remember saying to my my friends, and and then it was my husband to be. I said, you know, I, I'm stopping all this. I'm stopping all this. And they would be like, oh no, we we you know what? You're fun to be around, and and we don't like you know. We want you at the party, and you, you got to drink with us. No, 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 no. I, I'm I'm done with this. I I felt even then the Lord calling me. I said, I'm done with this. So I would still try to go to parties and tell them, you keep doing what you're doing, and I'm okay. So I would go to the parties, and and, and they would pass, you know, the beer, offer beer, and i go, oh, no, no, I don't want one. And then, you know, there would be other things that they're at the party. No, I don't want any. I don't want any. So I'm sitting there, and they're like going, oh, okay, she's not going to have any, but I'm at the party. So the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to me as he was drawing me, and he said, now, if you're not going to participate, and if you're not going to be in this, why are you here? Whoa, what are you here for? <laughs> and so I finally got enough courage to say, you know, I really don't need to go to the party. I'm not going to hold it against you for going, but I really don't need to go because I don't have a desire to go anymore. What I'm looking for is not there. I'm looking for uh, something else to fill this void within me. Remember, we started out today talking about being in a room full, as I mentioned, my pastor said today, and you're feeling empty. I've always had that. You'll feel that void inside. Remember, we talked about looking for love in all the wrong places. But God is our source. He wants to fill that void. And I'm telling you, the joy of the Lord, there is no high that can match it. There's nothing I could drink, nothing I could smoke that would match the high that I've had in Jesus since I've been walking with him. And I have been walking with the Lord since 1978. I thank God for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Yes, he's been changing me, making me, and molding me. He's been there with me through every hardship, every trial, every tribulation. My prayer today, Lord, prepare me a sanctuary pure and holy, tried and true. So with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary just for you. There's an old song that some songwriters used to do years ago. And we're going to close with this. And I just remember just a little bit of it, I think. Um, just a little bit of it, if I can remember. It goes... you. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for each and every one that's under the sound of my voice today. Lord, that they will experience the secure foundation that is in you. That you will never leave you will never forsake. We give you praise today. And we thank you. God bless you all. 
We will see you next time at Testimony Time. Send us a, a note. You can read us on YouTube. If you like it, share. Just go to YouTube.com and Esther Pinkston, and then just share it with someone. I've gotten many people say that they've been blessed by the words that the Lord has given me. It's not mine. I'm obeying the Spirit of God. So if God has blessed you, share it with someone. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.